it's on the verge of success. Soon, peace and order will be restored throughout the galaxy. Even now, our capable forces, led by Darth Vader, are striking back at the rebel insurgents. The rebels are unprepared for our attack. Signal Vice Admiral Thrawn to launch his TIE squadrons immediately. Stronghold has no hope of escape. Commence the attack. Yes, sir. Ladies and gents, and welcome to Retro Gaming with Mags. This is going to be a new segment that I put on the channel, and let's be honest here, this is just an excuse for me to go back and play some of my favourite old games and share them with you, so that's what I'm doing. Now, seeing as today is May the 4th, or Star Wars Day, I figured I'd start with one of my favourite space games of all times. This is Star Wars TIE Fighter, the Collector's Edition CD-ROM. It's actually almost been two decades to the day since I sat down in front of a computer and played this game for the first time. 1994 this game first came out, 1995 was the year that the Collector's Edition CD-ROM, often considered to be the definitive version of Star Wars TIE Fighter, was actually released. I actually still have my original copy of the Collector's CD-ROM, completely unmarked, sitting under my desk at the moment. I haven't played it in years, however, because well, it, it takes hours to screw around with DOSBox to get it to work, and I've just never bothered. But just recently, the good old games version of TIE Fighter was updated to include the Collector's Edition CD-ROM version, and I was very quick to pick it up. So, let's go into the game and take a look around and see exactly why this game is so fondly remembered by so many. Enter your name, pilot. And that was the first thing that set the Collector's Edition apart from the standard versions and the previous game, X-Wing. Voiceovers. This hadn't been done in any game of its kind. I think TIE Fighter was the first space combat game to actually include full voiceover work. Now the second thing that was very unique about TIE Fighter is this room here, the film room. Now I haven't flown anything in TIE Fighter yet at this point, so I can't show you anything. But that allows basically replay functionality, like you would find in modern games like War Thunder. This was very new at the time. In fact, I do recall at the time this was the first time I'd ever seen anything quite like it. The ability to watch back my battles after I'd actually flown them and see what I did and look at my ship from the outside. I'd, I'd never seen a game that could do that before. Now the second thing that was done in the 1995 version of this game was an upgrade in the graphics department. Yes, what you're seeing on screen right now is actually an upgrade. The original release of the game in 1994 only had a maximum resolution of 320 by 200. The collector's edition CD-ROM allowed that to be updated to 640 by 480 for those who had a computer powerful enough to run it. Another thing that was groundbreaking about this game was the sheer number of objects that could show up in space and the variety that was available. The number of ships, both Imperial and Rebel, as well as Independence, patrol craft, crates, transports, even the space stations and setups themselves that were surrounded by these floating containers had tugs like what you see on screen that could move around and move the shipping crates. Again, this was a level of detail that had never been done before and I had never seen. So anyways, we're just going to speed this up just a little bit so we can quickly get through all the items that were within the game in a short amount of time and actually get through to the first mission of the game, which is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to take out the TIE Fighter for its first flyout. Yep, there's the space mines, probes, scout craft, compact utility vehicles, carrot cruisers, strike cruisers, dreadnoughts, space stations, 
And there we go, back to the TIE Fighter. So as you can see, a massive amount of Star Wars spacecraft were modelled for this game, ranging in size from small single-person fighters all the way up to things like the Star Destroyers. Now just before we go into battle, there was a couple of other rooms there. One of them was the combat chamber. This is effectively a skirmish mode, where you can just fly out and shoot fighters to your heart's content. The second was a training simulator, and it's actually a flight obstacle course. You wind up with the starship inside of a ring. Each time you complete a circuit in the ring, the ring changes slightly. Occasionally it'll start shooting at you, or it'll become more complex, requiring far more speed and control. It teaches you how to fly tight maneuvers, so it has two tutorials, which is interesting considering we're now in an era where we're quite lucky if we get one. Now the second part, and this is a really important one I want to have a quick chat about, campaign selection. This is your campaign selection room, and I'm just going to pause it here for a second. Modern games might come with one campaign that only goes for anywhere between 2 to 6 hours. If you get a really good one, you might get up to 10 or 12 hours out of the campaign. If you're a younger gamer and you've ever wondered why you talk to some older gamers and they get really annoyed by this fact, it's because of games like this. This game's first campaign is about six hours long, give or take depending on what difficulty level you're playing on and how good you are on the stick. But it comes out of the box with six campaigns as standard, each campaign taking on a different theatre of war, going through a timeline starting at just after the Battle of Hoth in The Empire Strikes Back, all the way to just before the Battle of Endor and Return of the Jedi. The Collector's Edition also come with the expansion packs for TIE Fighter, which adds an additional two campaigns, each one about 10 hours long. Now, of course, you could knock these campaigns over faster if you really wanted to power run your way through the game, but the average gamer would pull 60 hours, or very close to 60 hours, out of TIE Fighter straight off the shelf. That's without going looking for any mods or anything you can do to try and extend gameplay. Just set it to hard mode and there is the next 60 hours of your entertainment ready to go. That's why we get annoyed at six hour campaigns. So, welcome to the mission room. Now we've got a couple of options in here, only two of them and Start Battle are really available on the first mission. So first up, let's go straight into the briefing and see what the go is. One TIE fighter from Alpha, Beta and Gamma squadrons will be out on patrol around outpost D-34. Your mission is to inspect all cargo carrying vessels as they pass by our station. We are on the lookout for rebel forces that are fleeing from their base on Hoth. Now at this point if you leave the briefing running it will just continually repeat forever until you leave it. So we'll skip out of the point here and we'll go through and talk to the flight officer. You are to inspect all cargo carrying vessels that pass through this area. To accomplish this, target each freighter and transport. Then fly close enough for your ship's sensors to determine what cargo the vessel has on board. Check your progress on the mission goal screen, toggled by hitting the G key. You will fly the TIE fighter designated Alpha-1. You will be the only craft in your flight group. Stay alert for radio messages as this mission progresses. Use your message log, toggled by hitting the L key, to review this communication. Freighter traffic has been above normal in this area. We think this is related to the retreat of rebel forces in the aftermath of our attack on their base on Hoth. Stay alert for rebels hidden amongst the freighter convoys. Alright, let's go find us some rebels. Incoming ships. They're entering the area near Boyd B-18. Freighters requesting permission to pass through this sector. TIE Fighter Alpha-1, inspect all craft. Transports requesting permission to pass through this sector. Now the combat in TIE Fighter is actually surprisingly in-depth. If you look immediately to the left and right hand side of the screen, you'll see two gauges, one marked L, one marked E. This is your engine and laser power settings, and as you go through combat, you'll shift power back and forth between these two settings to either increase your engine speed or to increase power to your weapons and allow them to recharge. If you look in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you'll see a small icon of a TIE Fighter surrounded by several bars. This is your shield display. Now, the standard TIE Fighter doesn't have any shields. 
so no power can be shunted there. On more advanced ships that you get access to later on in the game, however, you then have to start juggling shield power in with energy and laser power. To the centre of the screen you have two green bars. This is your current weapon's power settings. When they're bright green, you actually have double charge. Your weapons will do significantly more damage. However, once those initial charges run out, you go to a darker green setting. This is your lower power levels. When you go to those, your weapons do less damage, but you continue firing. When they run out, you're out of charge and you need to shunt power back to the laser systems in order to fire. You'll see the power running out here when I start firing on this freighter. Now if you look to the bottom left and right hand side of the target reticle, you'll see that there is two dots. One is blue, one is green. That is the current laser that's actually ready to fire. You can adjust your fire rates for vessels that have more than one laser. So as they pulse back and forth, they rotate. You can actually set the weapons to dual fire, so they'll both fire together. On ships with more than two weapons, you can cycle multiple firing options between the two. Just giving the guns a quick chance to charge so I can keep them in optimal power levels. And if you notice the sound change there, that was when we shifted over to the lower power setting. Anyway, Freighter's shields are now out. Let's run over this way. I've played this mission so many times in the past that I actually remember the warp in points for the next set of ships. Just quickly checking in my message logs and my combat goals, hitting these actually pauses the game so you can check them safely in between combat. Now another thing that was pretty amazing for the time with TIE Fighter's systems was the full 3D display of the hostile target in the bottom of your screen. What was more interesting than that however, if you look in the bottom right hand side of that display it says fuselage and you'll notice there's a little box sitting on the fuselage which is lit up gold on the target. You could actually target select subsystems on a game built in 1995, so you could eliminate a target's engines, eliminate its weapons, pick which point in the spacecraft you wanted to destroy. So it looks like we've got some YT-1300 freighters coming through that we need to check out, but I'm going to take the time to actually deal with a couple of these shuttles first. Now you would have noticed on the targeting reticle in the center of the screen, one of the lights just lit up red. That was an indication that the one of the shuttles had actually locked onto me as a target and was attempting to attack. It lets you know exactly the moment you need to go evasive. Finding targets in TIE Fighter in a 3D space was actually quite easy. The two screens on the top right and left hand side are dual radars. The one on the left hand side of the screen is displaying everything that is in front of you. The one on the right hand side is everything that is behind. Couldn't be easier. Yes, Flight Officer, why do you think I'm destroying the shuttles first? It's funny, almost two decades on in gaming and developers still think it's a great idea to have a really annoying bloke continually repeat obvious mission objectives to you over and over again in order to keep your attention. Okay, so with the last of those shuttles destroyed, it's time to move on and try and get the bonus objectives done. These YT-1300s, there's only two of them, but we've got to scan them, and then two more freighters just jumped in, heavy freighters, and quickly scan those out. Once again, shift power back to the engines. Oh, I take it back, there was actually three. Ah, two heavy freighters, that's where I got it wrong. Good work, Alpha One. 
secondary mission objectives complete. Good work. The second wave of freighters was inspected. More importantly, we have captured the rebel freighter. So, with all the freighters scanned, all we've got to do is engage and destroy the remaining shuttles. Now, this being the first mission of the campaign, that's why they're giving you shuttles to fight rather than fighters. It doesn't take long for them to ramp it up, however. This is Gamma 1. Target destroyed. Two down, one to go. And that's it, this mission is now complete, so let's go through and check out the debriefing. Now the debriefing screen is actually rather detailed, it's what battle you're on, what campaign number, number of missions, and your score for the mission. Yes, this game is actually old enough that it comes with a score system. Whether or not it was a success or not, any upgrades that you got in terms of rank, as well as your percentage chances of hitting. In this case I had an 88% hit rate. The number of kills you got and any ships you captured. You have discovered a freighter full of rebels trying to escape from their base on Hoth. Excellent work. As we expected, fleeing rebels are trying to sneak through this sector. We captured a freighter full of rebels trying to escape from the planet Hoth. Hoth, a nearby ice planet, was the main base of the rebels. The recent Imperial attack on this base has driven their forces into flight. The interrogation of these rebel prisoners should help us track more of them down. And of course the flight officer debriefs you on a successful mission completion. If you happen to fail a mission he'll also give you advice on how to manage to complete it. So that's my look at TIE Fighter. It's been a long time since I've played this game but I'm looking forward to playing more. If you want to see more retro games on my channel in between my main event videos or maybe you just want to see a little bit more of TIE Fighter, let me know in the comments below. Click a like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and may the 4th be with you.